feel like I know what this trick's gonna be. This is from a sprint car. Combination of two stupids. Yep. The engine placement is spot on. Do you have my batteries? Every $69 you spend? <laughs> God dang! Let me pull out my RC car next time. I'll drive the Lambo at any time. It will smoke. It will, for sure. Well, unless I call Damon and get some more tires. Oh, what the heck? Dang, look at that radio. That's a, yo, that's the five if I've ever seen it. It's an eight cores. Eight, eight cores. Eight cores. He just made it up. Soupy, what are we doing today? Well, we are going to try to get this thing started. 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 Did you accidentally say started? It Nobody can hear you because that lift is so and loud. God damn no radiator, no fan. Radiator's right here. Listen, all you need is some just wires. Wires, you plug them into the thing. Look, you just gonna let it run dry? No, we get the all we the 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 all right, this looks weird. This is not us. We don't normally start off driving a Lamborghini and then have a motor. <laughs> <laughs> this is not. It's just one of those. Yeah. Can you tell the people that's our new shit car, our yard car? Yeah. Well, Hurt said he could beat me in a race. Uh, really, we just wanted to drive the Lambo. Yeah. Hey, but anyway, we got a Motec. Man, it looks so stupid because your face is in it. Wow. <laughs> it's actually the same size as the stock. Like, it just fits everywhere. Yeah, like, all of because the they make three different sizes. Now I see Hurt. A little bit of wire. We already finished the interior harness. You gotta plug it together. Wow, that's it, huh? That's it. That's the whole interior. Gosh, it looks so nice. And right. turn signals and everything work. This turn is a signal car. Well, luckily we have a drive shaft. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have a drive shaft? We have a drive shaft. Isn't there a body kit? <laughs> You're telling us that just today we're gonna start this thing. Yes. So we have a lot to do. Yes. See ya. Putting brake pads in. Ooh. I am putting in some Hawk Street pads and our big old bear brakes. These street pads are what I run in the Miata and they're fantastic. Like I daily with these. I have track pads as well, but the street ones are really nice. I didn't even put my track pads on because they stopped so good. You know the coolest thing about this is that I don't think these are the right ones. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. It's happened to me before. You can just pop it on. And it stays it on stays. there. It stays. You just have bolts on the side here instead of directly behind. That's way nice. That's super sick. Yeah. Never walking again. My breaking stuff. They really figured out brackets. They're so nice. You can change pads so quick. What do I think? I think the engine placement is spot on now. We cut off the motor mount that came with the kit, raised it a little bit, and it worked out just fine. I have to finish up the wiring on this side for the injector. Fuel system's all the way in. Fuel lines are in. Alex is working on the brake system now. So we just got a little things here, a little things there. Why is this thing up in the air? Why is it going up in the air? Because you put it like that, people. Fuel lines don't do this. This is a no-no. That might work. Come here. It's that or the big boy? What happened to all the rest of them? I don't know. They're gone. Oh, that was my f***ing thumb, you f***ing... <laughs> ah! You almost crushed my hand last Friday. Ah! 
Oh, oh, oh damn. damn. We had to take the uh, dashboard back out. So I gotta put this battery right here under the dash because we want everything to be nice and clean. Gonna make a plate, comes down here, maybe box it, get that thing in there like that. We can still get to the terminals if we need to and it'll be easy to take out. Let's see where this goes. Damn it! Oh, well, how are you gonna get this big ass connector through the middle of the car, you stupid? That is easy. You'll put a big enough hole for it to go through. Are you stupid? <laughs> look, the dash is out so you can drill the hole. That way you don't see any wiring. Look, look. I can't you look can. in the car. Put it right there. You know it's gotta go this way, right? That's a hole. You can't just leave a hole. Well, you couldn't tell until you poked at it like that. Well, what if you oh someone pokes at it? Oh my god, they left the hole. Oh my god. Daniel, hurry up, stupid. Oh! <laughs> oh yeah, we're good. Last check for fuel. So what you gotta do when you don't have any buckets. Dude, it's too f***ing early for this shit. This is a little bracket thing I made to hold the battery. It's probably what, 10 pounds? Yeah, I'd say about 10 pounds. Okay, there's six 3 8 bolts holding this in. That's more than our engine mounts. I think the bolts weigh more than the battery. This yeah. battery that I can lift up with a finger? Can I do it with the pinky? <sighs> so, all right, get this shit out of my face. Put it right there. Look at that, full access. Get the fucking camera in here. That. Give me that, is this focused? Does that look tight to you? No, 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 no. A perfect opportunity to drill the hole. That does not look better. This is how we mount batteries. That thing have a good microphone on it. Oi. I drill that hole in the middle, you are doing it that way. I hate that hole in the middle. Oh, it's like so stealthy. That's we, nice. We just spent like 40 hours on this goddamn harness. No one even knows that thing exists. That's the whole point. I could've used duct tape and boogers. Fuel pump and sending unit. I gotta get four wires forward so we can get a gas gauge. Where's my freaking Daniel? All right, see this? Regular old automotive wiring. Just nylon coated, copper wiring inside. A lot of times we gotta go around the engine bay and there's a lot of heat right next to the header, you know, by the starter, by the flywheel, by the engine, whatever. And what happens is it melts this shielding off this. You have a short, you're gonna have a bad day. So what we do is we use the Thermotech heat sleeves, simply just put it inside the sleeve, just like that. And now you have an extra barrier between the heat and the wire. Down, so we go home. I called them an hour ago. Is it ready to fire? Yeah. yeah. Show up. There's no header or nothing. What a guy. Yeah, 22. You guys see this? This is my favorite. When Soupy's big brother comes here, because look, look at Soupy. Little baby now. Look at him. The gooder brother. <laughs> Soupy does a lot of stuff. Chan comes in, cleans it up. And then he actually finishes the car. How are you, Bert? I'm great. How are you? Not too bad. Hired or shit. I'm sorry your brother is the way he is. You know, what can you do? You've been dealing with it for how many years now? Well, thanks again for, no we appreciate all. you. No We'd be nothing problem. without you. <laughs> you want to see my setup? This is my battery terminal. It was like this. Oh. Dude, 
that's not bad. One shot. You want to start it up one more time? He's gonna push it around the parking lot, just making noise. Bam, bam, bam. Hey. Heavy performance, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> The dash is back in. Alex made this nice little plate to hold all our stuff. Battery tray that's all in there. It's underneath the dash. Instead of just having a big old clunky fuse box and relays, we're using this. This is an MSD solid state relay. This is four relays in one. So power goes in here, and then these are your outputs here. Super easy. I've used these a hundred times on different cars, and it just makes wiring a car way easier. Less wires, no fuses, solid state relay. Never goes wrong. We took the transmission back out. I don't know if you noticed, but we didn't have the clutch and that's because our boys over at Action Clutch were still making it. This is our twin disc setup. Okay, do this. Now I just gotta put it in. Is it on? Yeah, it's, yeah, it's on. Oh my god, we are the worst. Yeah, let me get it from this angle. I gotta get the lining just right. This is the shitty tricky part. It's two discs. So you gotta line everything up and into the part there. Nice. You gotta be careful. They already shimmed it and everything too, so we don't have to do shit. This is a shitty camera angle. Yeah, I am a shitty cameraman. Ah, he just installed a clutch. You just installed a clutch. What kind of clutch? <laughs> it's an action twin disc. Wow. Very streetable. Very nice. Very nice. So what makes this clutch ideal for our application? I gotta find some bolts. Can you shut the hell up? Dude, you're horrible at this. Maybe people want to know why you choose a certain clutch for a certain application. So that side's all mopped up, ready to be finished off. The trick is to try to get the primary tubes as close to even as possible. These are straight and those come up. That's just trying to get the tubes to be even length. Same thing goes on this side, but this side has its own little challenge because it's got this steering shaft that goes from the steering column into the new rack. Three of the tubes are gonna go on one side of the steering shaft and one tube is gonna have to go on the other side. So it sucks, but you gotta do what you gotta do. doesn't fit, you jerk. I'm making a custom center console for our third gen. Made it out of aluminum, threw it up a CAD, coated it with steel it. Windy. Ah! Next step is to back it with carbon fiber. And since this is gonna be our window switch plate, we'll go right in here like so. Put the window switches in there. Also gonna have our shift boot right here. So now I'm gonna bond our carbon fiber panels to the center console with some fancy glue. There you go. Pretty cool, huh, Rich? Super cool. You see this? Can you stop insulting it, please? K&N air filter. We got the air filter box. We got the top. It's beautiful. Then we have this. It's just a flat plate. How is air gonna get in there to go into our intake? See, it's gotta go right there. Yeah, look. Angela! This is from the K&N race program. This goes like this. It's all made out of carbon fiber. It's got that K&N filter material there. You wanna know what this is from, Soapy? Oh, this is from a sprint car. That's how friggin' cool this thing is. Gotta cut a big ass hole. I gotta make a plate. This will bolt onto the plate, and then this will bolt onto that plate, and we're done. We got a K&N air filter box. Look at how cool that is. I love that. Stupid. A really good idea when I'm welding on the. Wait, air. wait, is Daniel underneath the car? <laughs> 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 oh. <laughs> Sorry, Daniel, I forgot you were there. <laughs> you didn't even say anything, at least you could have screamed or something. Got the air filter installed. Cut out this hole using a template like so. Goes on the top, and these plates are gonna sandwich it to the bottom of our throttle body. It goes here, go in the top, like so. Oh my god, gonna need some fancy editing for this one. No good piece of sh What can I do for you? You put the clutch line in backwards, you dummy. Why would you put the bleeder on the bottom? 
Damn. Oh. Boom. There you go. Yeah, it's really cool. Hawk HP 600, HP 660 brake fluid. It is a 660, so we can have a higher minimum boiling point for our brake fluid. Because Soupy's gonna build that header on top of the brake lines. And it's also my fault for putting the brake lines on top of where the headers go. It's a two way street, brother. Combination of two stupids. Yep. Mm hmm. Again, pump it. Mm hmm. Oh, hold on, hold on. You there we go. I do want to say amazing work on the graphics. That last round of comments, like it came through exactly what we were looking for. Like that Hoonigan logo and the placement and everything, really sick. Yeah, we're really excited to work with you guys. Hopefully this is a raging success and then everyone's aligned and we can do part two next year. And wrote that down on my agenda of start conversation for V2 now. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So what do we want to start out with? We want to do a little show and tell. Jose's going to pull up here is the math for the body kit for the car. Okay. Um, we 3D scanned the car before we sent it to you guys. This is based on the several reviews that you, you and I had together. And the team really went out of their way to capture the feeling from those drawings and get the uh, Street Fighter that you, you guys had envisioned for this. From where we started to now, this looks so sick. Like, I, I love that detail right in front of the wheel. Yeah. Dude, that front bumper is sick. I didn't even notice you guys put the Hoonigan logo in there. The design that we've added to the car is not overpowering to the design overall. The Gen Camaro is a pretty iconic car, and it's also it's got a lot of unique design features in it from the oh, factory. Yeah. Just to give it a little bit more modern, more sporty appearance, we hid the uh, the Hoonigan H there on the bottom in the middle. Oh, um, might be a little it. tough to see on the screen here, but this vehicle looks like it was, you know, obviously we developed together as a partnership, but it's done by the design studio that designs all the production cars. I think when you work with an OE and not an aftermarket body kit company, you really yeah. hone in on the specific details rather than pumping the body out eight inches on each side. Your philosophy that you wanted to make this look like a clean street fighter, um, really focus on the engine, I think was a great design brief and it allowed us to kind of reflect Fine it, tone it down a little bit, and really make a sophisticated body kit. How far can we zoom in on the badge on the front? We can zoom in on a little bit, but we've got some images we can show you in a second here. When our designers found out that we were going to be working together, they started looking at the third gen badge, which was iconic. Yeah. And the the Hoonigan H, and it's just it just fits so well. We could not do it. And yeah. Shout out to Danilo on our team for doing that. It it turned out awesome. So simple. Okay. Everybody loves it. So I'd like to show you guys the kind of the livery that you know we've been working on. We've got the HD truck that you guys will be using. So this is kind of where we landed on the final graphics for the HD truck. Dude, this came out so good. Really clean. Like I love the Hoonigan and Chev Chevrolet logo lockup. Looks really red. And then the nice thing is when you see the Camaro on the trailer, it's an instant tie together. So speaking of that Camaro, Jose, why don't we switch to the last one? Dude. Uh, Dang. <laughs> Dude, the inverse livery really worked out. Seeing yep. them both laid out, it looks friggin' awesome. That thick gray stripe that's on the rear quarter panel, that's actually the Hoonigan bar graphic, like that's behind you, Vin. That wow. sticker bomb, it's super subtle, and it'll fade out. And then again, you see that H logo on the back window, and then the crown jewel, right? The 632. That motor is just a monster, and uh, it's going to be the perfect jewel box, right, for the for the, the motor to sit in there. Yeah. Uh, I can't that wait to see cool. what you guys do with that. And I, I like that we took like a really subtle and effective approach of building the car. Yeah, this one's all about the motor to us. Like it's so cool that we got the first one. Yeah, 632 cubic inches. There's no third gen Camaro driving around with that motor. There's like four of my cars that aren't even as big as that one motor. We cannot wait to see how this thing turns out with you guys. We're super geeked. Um, we know that it's gonna be a, a mad rush to the end to get it done, but. How many days left do we have to bring this car? <laughs> <laughs> four days five days sweet well thank you guys great work to and the whole team mark this has been awesome thank you very much really appreciate it all right we'll see you guys at the show oh yeah all right bye. Days, guys every 69 dollars you spend gives you 420 69 entries to win this gear wrench what do you call this thing? Crawler! It's got a creeper. It's got magnetic. I'm done. Do a trick on it. I'm not doing any tricks. Get that shit out of my face. Do you see a trick though? I want to see a trick. Silly rabbit tricks are made for kids. Did you know that? You got good tricks. I feel like I know what this trick's going to be. It's going to be really loud. That's going to be really loud.
didn't that one yet. God dang. I was like, fire away. That thing sounds crazy. Oh my God. That, that sounds, sounds really, really good. Sounds hell that thing good. is choppy. Yeah. That guy's like flying. He's here in spirit. He's here in spirit right there. God damn. Oh my God. That sounds so good. Missed it. <laughs> Start it back up. It's Monday. This has to leave on Saturday. It has to leave on Friday. Oh, you should finish this. <laughs> we got to, we still got to put a livery on well, this thing too. It technically drives. You just put it in gear and the oh, wheel. Oh, this is Scott <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it clicked into <laughs> a gear. Look at this filter. Man. Holy hell. This thing is a behemoth. You know, this is the first time anybody outside of GM has ever heard that thing run. That's pretty sick. That's, pretty cool. That's kind of sick. Some, yeah. <laughs> Strange. <laughs> it just locked up all four.